Good evening, friends, and thank you very much for being here this afternoon for our regular interaction. The focus of today's uh, briefing will be the visit of uh, President uh, Xi Jinping of China to India. So I have here with me my colleague, uh, Mr. Pradeep Rawat, Joint Secretary East Asia, who is making his debut in front of you. Uh, and he handles uh, all matters relating to East Asia. That includes our important relationship with China. So what we will do is, as usual, I will make some opening remarks, following which uh, if there are any questions that you would like to ask, the floor will be open. And uh, if there are any very specific issues that you would like to ask, uh, Pradeep is available to respond to them. After which, we will also be available if you want to ask questions on anything else that is uh, of interest to you today. But the primary focus will be the visit uh, of the Chinese president to India. So with those opening remarks, let me start. As you are aware that India's new leadership is in an intensive state of uh, global engagement. And it is in this context that we are all set to welcome President Xi Jinping of China on his landmark visit to India from 17th to 19th of this month. President Xi is accompanied by a very high-powered delegation. Uh, he is accompanied by Madam Li Yuan, Pang Li Yuan, as well as two senior members of the Politburo, and these are Mr. Wang Huning and Mr. Li Zhang Su. In addition, State Councillor Mr. Yang Jiechi, who was formerly Foreign Minister, will be in the delegation, as will be the present Foreign Minister, Mr. Wang Yi. There are two other ministers, and that is the Minister for National Development, Mr. Xu Shaoxi, and the Minister for Commerce, Mr. Hu. Mr. Gao Hu Cheng. Um, and that gives you an idea of the importance uh, of the delegation. Now, this is the third visit of a Chinese president to India. The president, the previous two presidents who visited India were President Hu Jintao in 2006 and President Jiang Zemin in 19. 96. The visit of President Xi was preceded by intensive contacts between India and China. Let me recall for you some of these contacts. In May, after Prime Minister Modi was sworn in, Premier Li Keqiang was among the first foreign leaders to phone and congratulate him. Subsequently, in, September, in uh, June, Foreign Minister Wang Yi was amongst the first foreign ministers to visit India, and he came here as a special envoy of President Xi. At the end of June, Vice President Shi Hamid Ansari visited China for a bilateral meeting. In July, Prime Minister Modi and President Xi interacted on the margins of the BRICS summit. In August, Foreign Minister Wang Yi and External Affairs Minister Srimati Sushma Swaraj had a second meeting on the margins of the uh, East Asia Summit Foreign Ministers meeting in Nepitor. In September, in the beginning, the Minister, for, Minister of State for Commerce and Industries, Srimati Nirmala Sitharaman, visited China for the Joint Economic Group meeting. This was her second meeting with her counterpart because she was also in the delegation with the Vice President Sri Hamid Ansari in June. Finally, the National Security Advisor was in Beijing just last week to convey to the Chinese leadership, the importance that India places on the visit of 
President Xi. Um, as all of you are aware, China is India's largest neighbor. It is also amongst the most important trade partners that we have, with a trade volume exceeding $65 billion. During the visit of President Xi, we expect that all substantive issues which have a bearing on India-China relations will be discussed. Also, it is normal when the top leadership of India and China meet that they will discuss issues beyond bilateral matters. So, we expect issues of a regional nature impinging on Asia as well as global concerns that India and China share will be on the table for discussion. Let me give you a glimpse of the program so that you understand the importance that we place on this visit. As a special gesture, Prime Minister Modi will be in Ahmedabad and will receive President Xi when he reaches his hotel. Also, this is a first in terms of our bilateral relations. That is, Prime Minister and President Xi will witness the signing of some agreements in Ahmedabad on the 17th. What I meant by it being the first is that usually agreements are signed in Delhi between uh, why, when two leaders witness them. It is not that there have not been agreements signed outside Delhi. However, this is a first in terms of a prime minister and the president of China witnessing the signing of agreements outside Delhi. And I will answer any questions if you want to have about that. We'll come to that later. Uh, in addition, Prime Minister has invited President Xi to visit the Sabarbati Ashram and, is, is, and it is expected that the two will spend some time during their visit there. This will be followed by a private dinner that the Prime Minister will host for uh, President Xi. The main day of official engagements, okay, before I come to that, following this dinner, the Chinese president will depart Ahmedabad for Delhi and he will spend the night in Delhi. So, that's right, the 17th night. He comes on 17th and I've told you the program of the 17th afternoon. He will then depart Ahmedabad and reach Delhi the same night. The main official day of engagements in Delhi is the 18th as is normal for such visits. The President will be ceremonially received by Rashtrapati Ji and Prime Minister in the forecourt of Rashtrapati Bhavan in the morning, following which he will also visit Rajghat. Again, as is usual, uh, the first call will be by the External Affairs Minister, Srimati Susma Swaraj, who will call on President Xi. After which, we expect that there will be meetings between Prime Minister and President Xi at the Hyderabad House. These meetings will be both in a restricted format as well as delegation level talks. Following these discussions, we hope that both the leaders will witness the signing of several agreements, if these are the outcome of those discussions. In the afternoon, President Xi is scheduled to give a keynote address under the auspices of the ICWA. Prior to this, Vice President Shri Hamid Ansari will call on President Xi. In the evening, President Xi will meet 
Rashtrapati Shri Pranab Mukherjee, following which the President will also host a banquet for the visiting dignitary. On the next day, we have calls by the Speaker of the Lok Sabha and the President of the Congress Party. Uh, I think I've given you a broad idea of where we are in terms of the program. But I'd like to indicate and re-emphasize that we see this visit as an important milestone in our bilateral relations with China. We hope that this will lead to deepening of our engagement across the full spectrum of our bilateral relations with China. And we see this visit as an opportunity for progress on issues of interest both to India and to China so that both of us can benefit from the enormous opportunities that await our bilateral cooperation. I think what we will do is we will stop here. The floor is open for you to ask any questions and Pradeep or I will be able and we will try and respond to them as they emerge. Thank you very much. I forgot which Pradeep reminded, but that's uh, par for the course. And that, after the signing of the agreements, the two uh, leaders will also address media statements to all of you. No, after the signing of agreements in Delhi on the 18th, uh, we will put up the entire. Uh, we will put up the entire uh, advisory, media advisory of the media opportunities uh, in the next half an hour or so after this, so that you will have an idea well in advance of what are the media opportunities. Yes, now the floor is open. Yes, Manish? Has China formally proposed to us uh, that they want us to join the Maritime Silk Road Initiative, and what is the response to it? Manish, um, you know, the ancient trade routes in Asia, including the spice route, the incense route, and the silk route, are, uh, have been important channels of transmission of trade, but also of ideas, of art, of culture, and of spiritualism. For example, you are aware that Buddhism spread from India to different parts of Asia through the Silk Road. Now, uh, let us await the discussions, and if there are any issues of this, we certainly will uh, address it with interest because India has a maritime history and a desire to continue its engagement globally, including through the Indian Ocean. But I think it's premature to now talk about what the two leaders will discuss. You know, after the external affairs minister's statement about one China and one India, there have been suggestions in the media that uh, it's about time for India and China to settle their border dispute. And uh, so is this likely to figure in the talks? Is there some talk about the line of actual control being recognized as de facto and de jure international border? Is this on... Uh, is a part of the agenda in the next this week. Thanks. I did mention to you that all substantive issues of interest to India and to China will form part of the agenda. However, what the leaders choose to focus on, to emphasize, and to work about work on, I think is best left to the leaders, and we will certainly share with you the outcomes. But you are aware that it is not a practice 
to tell you in response to media speculation what the leaders intend to do three days from now. Yes, Dr. Akhilesh Suman. Sir, this is a follow-up of the same question. Uh, actually, in the oath-taking ceremony of Prime Minister Narendra Modi, the chief of Central Tibetan Administration, Lobjang Sangye, was called here. He was present. And presumably that had egged the Chinese. So in this uh, summit level meeting, uh, do you think that uh, this is going to be one of the issues that they will talk about Tibet and Kashmir? I don't know what you are trying to say based on what you think is an interpretation. As far as I'm concerned, I told you that all substantive issues of interest to India and to China will be available on the table, and this will be a discussion. Both the leaders are scheduled to meet in Ahmedabad as well as scheduled to meet in New Delhi. What's the outcome? We certainly will tell you later on. But let's not speculate in advance of what is important to which country. Uh, you are aware of what are our sensitivities. You're also aware of what the Chinese sensitivities are. And it is the intention of both of us to try and work out issues in a manner which we need to take into account the sensitivities of all, both the countries' control. Yes. Um, is it possible for you to share what are the agreements to be signed in Ahmedabad and in Delhi, at least the major areas? Good try. But let me give you a hint. Uh, obviously, those which will be signed in Ahmedabad relate to aspects that of that region. So I will leave it at that. Uh, let me tell you, you will have enough reporting to do from Ahmedabad and from Delhi. So those of you who are planning not to be active on day, get, get ready. There are going to be lots of agreements. And that's all I can share. But you are aware that it is not our practice to share what specific agreements will be signed on what day, because also these will be based on discussions between the two prime ministers, between the prime minister and President Xi. Yes, just a minute. Yes, Huma? Is there any business delegation coming and how many are there? In As you know, that uh, economic engagement is a very important component of our engagement. And uh, as Akbar has mentioned to you that the Minister of Commerce, as well as the Minister who is in charge of National Development <coughs> Commission, <coughs> he is also part of the delegation. So there will be some business component, some may be with the President, some may be separate from the President's delegation. Thank you. Just one minute. Yeah, sure. On business, so that we take it one by one. Yes. Uh, yes, Simon. Uh, trade deficit, uh, one of the big stumbling blocks as far as uh, India uh, are concerned. So uh, what is the roadmap uh, to address trade deficit? And secondly, how much uh, is China willing to commit to invest in India uh, in the, in the midterm or the long term? Trade deficit is certainly uh, an important issue. Uh, as you know that recently there was a, a meeting of joint economic group for which our minister has visited. And this issue did figure in that. And there is agreement that we need to address this. And why that is important? Because we need to have a sustainable path to development of bilateral trade. How this will be addressed, I think, is a matter of detail, which experts are already working on. And in time to come, we will certainly have a better idea. Thank you. As regards your issue about investment, I think, sir, yes, uh, we have uh, in the past uh, discussed possible Chinese investments in India, and we feel that this will also be on the agenda when the two leaders meet. Their outcomes we will share with you once that is done. Yeah. Uh, 
I may add that during the Vice President's visit to China, we had signed a memorandum of understanding whereby both of us had agreed to facilitate the setting up of industrial parks in India. You are aware that Prime Minister is very keen to move on decisions at a rapid pace. So we are working on trying to actualize the memorandum of understanding into reality with concrete outcomes during this visit. Yes. Yes, ma'am. Oh, okay, yes, okay, fine. Sir, like you said, the government has been working on these talks for the last couple of months, ever since this government took over. Would you say there are any focus areas that the government has great expectations from, from in uh, any set of spheres that uh, the talks are going to be held? Any kind of focus areas, any key expectation that you would uh, like to share? The key expectation is that we address issues of interest and concern to each other. Uh, as you know, solutions, the path towards a solution is based on a beginning of addressing those issues. So this is a new government. This is the first time in a structured format that the Chinese president and the Indian prime minister are sitting down. And as I've indicated to you, these are perhaps uh, instances which happen once in a decade. I explained to you when was the last meeting and the meeting before that, 1996, 2006. And therefore, this is an important occasion where the top leadership from India and China will sit and address all substantive issues of interest to both of us. Yes, ma'am. There have been, we'll take everyone. There have been two, two intrusions, one in the Demchok area and other in Chumar. Ahead of the Indochina talks, is this likely to be affecting our talks in any way? Well, this is what you say. But let me assure you that our brave sentinels on the border will address any issue that happens on the border. We are confident that our borders are in safe hands. And therefore, what happens on the border will be handled by those who we have reposed trust in. As regards issues on the table here, sure, there are unresolved issues, including the boundary question. And if your question is, that would that be addressed? My answer to that is yes. We've already told you that all issues of a substantive nature will be addressed. Yes. Ranji. Uh, during Foreign Minister Wang Yi's visit to India last time, a visa agreement was agreed upon. So is there any possibility of conclusion of this agreement during President's visit? Uh, during uh, uh, during uh, Foreign Minister Wang Yi's visit in June, I don't think I ever told you such an agreement had been arrived at. Yes, next. Uh, I don't know. I never said to you. So I will not answer what others said. Oh. There was no agreement reached in June on what you're saying. Yes, ma'am. Last week, there was an interaction between uh, Chinese media and the new Chinese ambassador. And he mentioned this time there will be an agreement about visa that will be signed. And last time we see that uh, Wang Yi, as he mentioned, that he said that staple visa is a flexible and a goodwill gesture from China. And if India agree, China will keep on this. What's India's stand? On what? On the visa, about staple, staple visa. And will this time Xi Jinping talk about this? Whether President Xi will talk about it is for us to wait and see the outcome. And so will be the issue of whether an agreement will be signed on this. As regards our stance, I think it's pretty clear that we expect no differentiation being made amongst any Indian citizen from whichever part of India he or she may hail. Yes. Yes, Manu. 
Sir, could you share some more details about the banquet being hosted for President Xi? Uh, can you confirm uh, to us if uh, uh, MOS Home has been invited and has confirmed his attendance at the banquet? <laughs> I think, Manu, I, I must confess, I don't know who is invited. Um, I can share with you that the two of us are invited, so we will be going there. And we can share with you at the end of it who is there or not, but I have no idea of this list of who is being invited. Uh, this is the banquet you're telling about the president here. So frankly, we have no idea about it, but we have an idea that the two of us are invited. So you can add two to that list that you are preparing. Yes, sir. Do you uh, share the form part of the agenda? And uh, Chinese have been pressing off late that Indian Navy and Air Force too, like Indian Army, should engage. Is there any proposal like that? I s explained to you, you are t all telling me what you have heard from the Chinese side. I am not the right person to answer what you've heard from the Chinese side. I can answer what you heard from the Indian side. And as far as we are concerned, I think consistently we've been saying, we will tell you the outcomes once those are done. We will not be able to share. We are a little bit slow, and you know me, I'm very slow in responding to all your smart questions, your intelligent questions. I only am a conveyor of information. I don't produce it. Yes. Yes, we shall. Uh, sir, the understanding on the disputed boundary is that neither side will squat in the disputed area while both sides patrol. Now, the Deputy Commissioner of Lay, Mr. S. S. Gill, he has just said that the Chinese for several days, Chinese civilian incidentally, have been squatting uh, in the disputed area and protesting the construction of an irrigation canal uh, under the Narega scheme. Now, is there any element of protest or at least the invoking of the border mechanisms? of which ME is a part? Because I think I just told there that what happens on the border, we are confident and we have full trust in the brave sentinels of the Indian border to take care of. Yes, sir. Is this the idea of uh, Chinese president visiting Gujarat is coming up from Chinese side or Indian side? Good question. But uh, let me explain to you. I think it's no secret that Prime Minister is extremely keen that India be showcased beyond Delhi. Uh, he has made this amply clear that he would uh, hope that when visitors come to India, that they also see the beauty and the magnificence of our country beyond Delhi. And therefore, this is a first of that nature. It is expected that we will be having many other such occasions where visitors from outside will be hosted in other places beyond Delhi. Yes, sir. Uh, could you just, uh, on the 19th, uh, the, what is the program? Could you just uh, repeat this? I will put up the program shortly so that you have no problems with that. But my understanding, I just gave you a couple of uh, uh, call, calls on. There are other elements to that program which we will put up because uh, part of the program relates to what we are facilitating. But also the Chinese president uh, has other elements of that program which they are managing themselves. So I will put that up shortly after we finish this interaction so that you have all information in black and white. Thank you. Yes, Parul? Uh, do you think that the BDCA between India and China has failed to check repeated intrusions by the Chinese? I don't think so. Next. Yes, Indrani. Uh, at, in the context of the current uh, reports of the transgression in the Demchok area, uh, according to reports, our brave sentinels have asked uh, MEA to intervene on their behalf because uh, they are have got nowhere. So the, uh, my question is, has the MEA taken this up with the Chinese side?
Uh, I must confess that your reports seem not to be corroborated by uh, what my colleague has information here. Yeah. Santosh? I have explained in as many without in as diplomatic a language as you said. I don't want to go further and accuse others. Yes. Proposed on smart cities or high speed trains? Sure. Both these issues are of importance to the Prime Minister. He has made it very clear that he is looking for investment in India from all quarters. Smart cities is a major project, as is railways a major project. And you would not be incorrect in thinking that these elements are likely to figure in any discussions. Yeah. And these were, uh, prior to this, also raised in the Joint Economic Group uh, meeting which were held recently. Yes, one by one. Yes, Frank. Hi. In, in recent days, uh, Indian officials have on different occasions described uh, said that this visit would help Indo-Chinese relations uh, go into a new orbit and uh, take a, a dramatic new direction. Could you, could you explain the basis for those comments? Uh, the proof of the pudding is in the eating. Wait for it. Yes. Yes. I'll answer all questions. Uh, sir, Leh ke district magistrate ne abhi abhi confirm kiya hai ki Chinese sainiko ne ghuspaid kiya hai. Uh, kya aapke paas is, iske baare mein koi taja jankari aai hai ya phir jo information hai wo updated hai? Uh, dekhi, mein toh bas aapko wo jawaab de sakta hoon jo mere paas information hai. Aur mein ne, aur mein ye keh chuka hoon ki hume confidence hai jo humare veer sainik hai wahaan par wo इन सारे मामलों को सुलझा सकते हैं यस yes, गीता हाफिज सईद इन लेट्स फिनिश दिस पार्ट वी विल कम टू दैट एनी वन एल्स ऑन यस यस वॉट रियली हैज बिन द टेक अवे फ्रॉम द एस आर लेवल टॉक सो फार एंड वेन आर एक्सपेक्टिंग द अपॉइंटमेंट ऑफ द एस आर well you are aware that 17 rounds of uh, special re representative talks have been held given the prime minister's own pension for quick decision making i can assure you that a decision on this is imminent yes ma'am Uh, there is a perception that uh, in trying to negotiate trade and investment deals with China that India is hoping to play on the strategic rivalry in Asia between Japan, a U.S. ally, and China. Would you get a comment on that? I mean, this is a perception of whose? Oh, yeah, I don't answer that. Yeah. I mean, each one ask 20 of you, you have different views on that. I, it's not my job to answer perceptions of individuals or groups. But that said, India is interested, as Prime Minister has said, that if this is an Asian century, India, it is a century where India's development is integral to that. And therefore, all efforts will be made in our relationship with every one of our interlocutors to pursue India's economic development. You know, when President, uh, sorry, Premier Li Keqiang had come to India last year, he'd uh, spoken about the need for India and China to cooperate on nuclear energy. Uh, it's obviously even China is nascent in nuclear technology, but are there going to be talks, and what is the nature of the possible cooperation between India and China on nuclear energy? Uh, both India and China are developing economies with enormous appetite for energy. Both India and China have invested a lot in trying to promote civilian uses of nuclear energy. Both India and China are members of the International Atomic Energy Agency's Board of Governors, and this gives them a status of understanding the importance of nuclear energy and how to use it. 
Given the challenges that both India and China face in terms of their energy mix, both are committed to the peaceful uses of nuclear energy. Therefore, it is normal if two countries with such huge energy requirements, with such huge interest in promoting nuclear energy meet, there could be discussions on possible cooperation in this area. Yes, sir. Sir, are the left party leaders meeting presidency? Do you have any information on that? I don't, but maybe Pradeep has. Uh, at this point of time, we do not have information on all the meetings that will be taking place. I think what we told you was there are some meetings that we facilitate. There are some other meetings that the Chinese pr uh, president and the, through the Chinese embassy could have. So what we have, we shared with you. If there are any others, if we know of, we will certainly let you know. Let's finish. Enjoy. Just relax. Uh, are there any others who would like to ask on, on the visit? No, I understand that. Anyone else on the visit? Well, yes, if there are none, Shinjai, shoot. Sir, uh, this morning the Pakistan High Commissioner said Hafiz Saeed is a Pakistan national and he's entitled to roam around in Pakistan. In view of the points that you made to Pakistan on 26-11 and also the question uh, which was, the answer to which was roam around, etc., was the fact that he was in POK close to the line of control and with the Pakistan army. What are your comments on that? Srinjoy, so our views on Hafiz Saeed are pretty clear, and I will repeat them. To us, he is the evil mastermind of the attacks on Mumbai. To us, he is one of the accused in an Indian court of killing on the streets of Mumbai. We have repeatedly asked Pakistan that he should be apprehended and taken through the normal judicial process. Alas, he has never been arrested on account of 2611 ever. Therefore, what you say is obvious that he is only free because he is a Pakistani citizen. Now, if your question is that Pakistan always says that there is no information provided by India and therefore they are not able to take action against him? My answer to that has also been said before, but let me repeat. The answer is that 99% of the evidence in this case is in Pakistan. That is because the entire conspiracy was hashed in Pakistan. The planning for this dastardly act was done in Pakistan. The financing for this act was undertaken and uh, in Pakistan and the people who were involved in them were from Pakistan. Therefore, it has always been our view that it devolves on Pakistan to ensure that criminals like Hafiz Said are brought to book and justice is delivered in the instance of the crime in Mumbai. I hope I've answered your question clearly. Yes, Nas. Um, there are reports that Pakistan is recruiting Sri Lankan Muslims for spying on India. Again, what do, I, what do you want me to do with reports? I don't answer to reports. If you say that there is a diplomatic equation in this, I can answer that. If you say there is a report or there are reports, what do I do with it? Uh, as far as I am concerned, if there are reports of the nature that you are saying, there are channels between India and Sri Lanka to address them. 
these need not be diplomatic channels. There are other direct channels available between us and the friendly government of Sri Lanka to tackle such elements who you say, according to reports, are putting in jeopardy our national security. And let me assure you that these channels are available and they are functioning very smoothly. Anyone else? If not, yeah, well, no, not only once. Yes, sir. Yes, I will answer. Hindi Divas, an annual event held yesterday in Jaffna, Sri Lanka. Speak Hindi Divas, an annual event held, uh, held at Jaffna, Sri Lanka. On this special occasion, uh, Acting Council General, Indian Acting Council General S.T. Muthi stated that 15% uh, of the Indian population of North India learned Indian ling language Hindi, like the same uh, people in the... Uh, People who speak Tamil in northeast region of Sri Lanka should take an initiative to learn uh, um, single as their uh, ling language. Uh, what is India's stand on this matter particularly? I must confess this is the first I've seen of it. Let me have a look at what you are saying and what he's purported to, to have said. I will then respond to you. I assure you I'll respond to it the next time because it's the first I've heard of it. Or... Um, and I have not seen anything or heard anything about that. But we will uh, get back to you on this. Yes. Yes, sir. Sir, uh, recently the Sri Lankan president, uh, it's uh, talk about that uh, 13th Amendment is not possible for, uh, so that uh, what the Indians stand? So, well, our stand has been repeated, and I can repeat it again for you. Our stand is that any decision that has been taken by the Sri Lankan people and which th their leaders have assured to us on repeated occasions should be implemented and we have been assured and reassured by the leaders of Sri Lanka that they are committed to full implementation of the 13th Amendment and we will go by what they have told us. Okay. Sir. Yes. Only one, only one. Yes. Is there any official communique or engagement on the part of Bangladesh regarding the uh, Trinamool Congress uh, MP's alleged involvement in uh, money laundering and other? Yes. yes. In Bangladesh. Last Friday you said that till then okay. there was no communique. I can update you now. What I said on last Friday remains the factual situation even now. I have checked this up. We have not received any report of the type that was mentioned in that news organization's publication on Friday. So the situation remains. We have not received a report on this matter from our mission in Bangladesh. Thank you very much. We end this interaction now.